Of the many issues facing business leaders today, digital transformation, in my mind, is key to survival. But it's just one of the many ways we seem to get stuck in business these days. BVTV Spot Learn is about bringing you back the very best of our previous BVTV network guests to deliver a value-packed lesson of their choice. Today, I'm delighted to welcome back the co-author of this book, Stuck, How to Win at Work by Understanding Loss. Welcome, Dr. Victoria Grady. Hello, Victoria. The podium is yours. Hi, Malcolm. Thank you so much for inviting me to come back. I'm really excited to be able to share a few thoughts with your audience today around understanding the ability to use transitional objects to support organizational change and transition. So during COVID, Malcolm, I was acutely aware of how often I heard um, individuals on the television, um, as well as individuals just in my network and the environment around me talk about um, needing different mechanisms for support um, inside of their um, organizations. And, and the massive change that was brought about by COVID just exacerbated um, the need for this support. And I was really struck because as part of my research, um, for the last 15 or so years, I've been working in a space related to something called attachment behavior. And a subcategory or subset of, um, of, of research in that space is related to something called transitional objects and transitional space. So during COVID, I was particularly um, struck by how often this came up. This, But no one called it that. No one ever called it a transitional object or transitional space. But that's what they were referring to. And so I think that it is an important um, component to consider as organizations begin to um, move forward, as we are all headed back to work um, or headed to a hybrid environment or um, we are now working permanently remote, whatever the case may be, um, going through the change that we've experienced um, and getting ready for the changes that are still to come, um, the transitional object, I believe, can, can act as a great support mechanism. So we'll start today with understanding what a transitional object is. Malcolm, I don't know if you have ever seen a, the Peanuts cartoon, but in the Peanuts cartoon by Charles Schultz, there is a character and his name is Linus. And Linus always has a blanket with him. <laughs> so when we start talking about transitional objects, Malcolm, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the blanket that Linus is always shown with in the cartoon. Now, I'm not going to presume that individuals and organizations um, are carrying around a blanket, <laughs> but no. um, they use different types of objects or different manifestations of that exact same idea to support them. And let me give you one example that particularly striking to me um, during COVID. So in March of 2020, I was uh, walking through my living room and CNN was doing a story about an individual named Emily Fawcett. Well, Emily was a nurse um, at a hospital in New York City, and she was being interviewed to talk about something she had created called Hope Huddles. Well, the basic premise behind Hope Huddles is that the individuals that Emily was working with were really struggling to return to work the next day for obvious reasons. They were depressed. They were having um, a lot of stress that they weren't necessarily prepared to deal with as COVID really spiked. Um, and she decided to um, uh, to suggest to her leadership that they create this, this idea of hope huddles. And the, the basic premise was at the end of every shift, the individuals inside um, the hospital um, would come together as they ended their shift and they would talk about something positive that happened during that shift. And they would all be together to, to embrace the positivity. So understanding that lots of negative things had happened, they didn't want to focus on that. They wanted to end the shift by focusing on the positive. And it's pretty crazy how Emily Fawcett's work with Hope Huddles spread around the globe as a really good idea in the healthcare space to help individuals um, feel supported as they transitioned um, through this really tough situation that we were all faced with. 
after I noted that the story about Emily Fawcett, I began to notice other examples, like the the uh, team of executives at Walt Disney who decided to forego their pay in deference to um, trying to continue to pay their hourly workers, even though everyone was quarantined at home. An incredible support mechanism that was wonderful in that it helped them, you know, sustain their livelihoods. But it was even more than that. It was a uh, intangible object that said, we appreciate you and we care about the fact that you guys are in a horrible position and we want to try to do what we can to make it easy. Emily Fawcett's example and the Walt Disney example are classic transitional objects, providing employees with a support mechanism as they transition from a current state to a future state. I think that this is just something that is really critical um, to our ability to continue to transition forward um, through change. And as an, an individual or a leader or a manager or a supervisor inside of an organization, it might not look so obvious as creating something like a hope huddle or a salary um, or pay um, support mechanism. It could be something as simple as um, a lunch uh, meeting that you have. That meeting could be virtual or it could be in person, right? It just depends on what your employees might need. A, a mechanism, an opportunity for them to feel heard and feel like they are um, an important part of the organization transitioning through the change. I'm going to tell you one more story um, that was one of the original stories that I found related to this idea from a couple of years ago so that we can understand how mergers and acquisitions um, and changes in business structure can also be um, really enhanced by this ability to, to choose an, an object. So a few years ago, there was a publishing house that happened to be in the UK um, that was uh, purchased by an, a, uh, another much larger publishing house that had, um, I believe it's headquartered in the United States, um, but, but I'm, I'm not going to say the name, so you it won't hold me to that. But the, um, the, the larger publishing house was acquiring the smaller. The smaller publishing house had about 150 employees, and they really, really needed to feel like they were going to be supported. So the owner offered to um, support them with a uh, opportunity to purchase or um, be given a piece of his art as part of their um, transition package into working for the new company. Art on the surface might seem like something that you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't acknowledge that it would have anything to do with supporting you, but it was the fact that the owner was acknowledging the contribution of his employees as they move forward um, into the new company to provide that support. So let me wrap up really quick. Um, the, the, the wrap up is that transitional objects are basically an object, tangible or intangible, that provides support for employees as they are experiencing organizational change. It could be anything from, it could be a blanket, but it could also be um, a, a piece of art, or it could be a business process or a luncheon or a happy hour that allows the employees to feel like their opinion and their perspective on the change they're going through is important to the organization and a very important part of its evolution forward. So that's where we are, Malcolm. Thanks, Victoria. Now, let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, which obviously you, uh, viewers can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's dot pivot, P-I-V-O-T, P-N-T dot com, pivot, P-N-T dot com. Victoria's book, this one, co-authored with Dr. Patrick McCreesh, is called Stuck, How to Win at Work by Understanding Loss. And it's published by Routledge Taylor and Francis Group. Dr. Victoria Grady, thanks for delivering your excellent Spot Learn lesson. Thanks, Malcolm.